Oh, yeah! What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to The Fringe. I did a video last week on the channel talking about the extensive delays that are going on in Calgary when it comes to its water main break. And of course, why this is a blueprint for future lockdown events that are going to essentially cascade across the country, or at least be the catalyst for those things to cascade across the country. Now, what am I talking about? Well, when you look back to the World Economic Forum declarations, when you look back to behavior of government, of course, part of infiltrating the cabinets, as Klaus Schwab always said, and part of the control over Canadian citizens was the discussion of breaking down simple things, taking away people's abilities to defend themselves by shortening the food supplies, by limiting electricity and water, which we're going to get into today. But a lot of people got on board with what I was talking about. And there were many, including those on the Twitter platforms who came out and said, you don't know what you're talking about. You're a conspiracy theorist. None of this is ever going to come to fruition. Now, what are, those were claims that I made that were essentially heading into another form of lockdowns like pandemic. And that, of course, has now come to full fruition, at least the behavior that we're seeing coming through in Calgary. Now, I'm going to show you a video clip here from Rebel News talking about Jody Gondek and talking about what is now coming out in Calgary. Now, on that last video, I stated how uh, I had to spray some accidental mess from a dog off of, or our dog, off of a kitchen mat last week. And I, I literally turned my hose on for about 10 seconds to spray off this vinyl mat. And then all of a sudden, the next day, I'm contacted by Calgary Bylaw because, of course, neighbors snitched and said, you know, oh, he's using his hose, guys. We're not supposed to be using water right now, even though the city's doing it all over. And we're told, well, that's that's non-potable water. They have every excuse under the planet. And I said, this is the start of coof lockdowns all over again, where the neighbors are snitching on each other. The lines are open for people to do that. Of course, them Jody Gondek and city council making an announcement that snitch lines are open again because the water situation is getting worse. Now, of course, this water main break, I was over at uh, Maverick Media earlier this week talking with uh, Rick Walker again. Go show Maverick some love. Check out that interview. It was a fantastic interview. I know I streamed it live and then made the interview uh, private simply because I, I couldn't disable the stream after the interview. I didn't want to stream Rick's entire show on my channel. I don't want to take away from his views, but go check out that interview. It's sitting on his channel right now. Uh, it was a great interview, but we talked about this pipe and how essentially it's a very large pipe. 60% of Calgary's water comes through this pipe and uh, provides roughly the north end of town their, their drinking water, their clean water. Now, this pipe had burst on a pipe that was installed in the 1970s. And, and that pipe was said to last for about 100 years, at least first century. Now, as we've seen during Nahed Nenshi's days as mayor, the inspections were skipped. They decided not to do their due diligence to look at the pipe. And now the pipe has burst. And of course, repairs are underway. The problem aside from those repairs is that this should have been something that was handled very quickly. I have some questions when it comes to the handling of this project. Again, I've seen rumblings online that there was a pipe offered in Nisku, a town close to Calgary, in order to fix this problem. But Jody Gondek is having one brought in from San Diego. Now, I am not 100% sure as to why they're doing that, if it's a special kind of pipe, if it's something that they need in order to fix this repair properly. Um, I'm not sure, although I have talked to people who are city workers who have told me that this is a delay uh, that's going on that they can't explain. They've said that this should have been something that was handled within a few days, not a few weeks. And of course, now a further inspection of the pipe shows about five problem areas that are now going to extend the water restrictions in Calgary throughout the summer for another three to five weeks. This is where I said on that last video, we were going to see more lockdown style restrictions. I said, this is the beginning of it. Now that neighbors are snitching, now that people are being told, don't do anything when it comes to water. I understand that you can run out of water. I understand that, yes, this is a delicate situation. And yes, we do have to be vigilant. I'm going to get into some of the things that are discussed in this video. And then I'm going to talk a little bit more about why I have a problem with it. But now Jody Gondek taking press conferences saying, Hey, everybody, you're not following our restriction rules, so we're going to have to step in and we're going to have to be in charge of that power. Let's take a listen. 
the local emergency was enacted today to give us provision to go on to private property. We are not restricting indoor water use. We are providing you with suggestions and we are counting on your goodwill to reduce your indoor water use. But if we can't do our part by banding together, there may be some restrictions that come into place. And we are now contacting some customers to ask them to stop some operations and some activities. If we need to, the city has the ability to turn off water to a business if they are not complying with that ask. This would be a last resort and one we are prepared to take. Adopt and if it's yellow, it's mellow. And if it's brown, flush it down routine. So essentially them saying we're going to shut you down. We're going to shut off the water. Um, we have the ability, ladies and gentlemen, if you do not comply, and we are going to do everything in our power to make sure that we're in full control when it comes to the water situation. Now, again, I don't want to say that this isn't something that needs to be taken seriously. Of course it does. And I'm not saying that this water main break was deliberately done. I have said many times that it was a catalyst for what is happening with Jody Gondek. She said at multiple avenues early in the year, there was rumor circulating again since early February that Jody Gondek was going to find some way to restrict water usage. Electricity would be next. Everyone said, oh, that's a conspiracy. That's never going to happen. I'm not saying this water main break was done on purpose, but it was definitely a catalyst for Jody Gondek to launch those measures to tell people you're going to be limited. The biggest problem right now is when we get into Calgary's biggest outdoor show on earth that's coming in July, the Calgary Stampede. A lot of people saying, well, the city was using water. The city was doing different things. Um, why are they using that water to water plants at a time when uh, we're supposed to be conserving water? And we're being told, well, that's non-potable water. That potable water or non-potable water can be used for watering plants. It can be used for uh, greeneries. And now we're being told, well, it can be used for the Calgary Stampede as well, because God forbid the city wants to limit everybody else, but they don't want to shut down the greatest outdoor show on earth. And I'm going to show this video clip and then we're going to get into why that's happening. Leadership at Calgary Stampede has determined all the ways that non-potable or non-treated water can be used for things like keeping dust down on the track after the chuck wagons and also general cleaning. They are also working with the provincial government to identify other municipalities where they might be able to access potable or drinking water and have it trucked in for the livestock that will be there for Stampede and for the guests that are visiting. Now, while our festival and tourism partners are making backup plans, we at the city are doing everything possible to get us to the July 5th target date to get us, to back, get us back to normal flow of water. I also heard yesterday a little bit of uh, downer news that there's some people that are harassing city workers when they are doing water related work. This is not acceptable. City workers who are flushing water lines via hydrants are doing this to make sure that they're meeting regulatory standards for water quality, public health and safety and to maintain our water system. And I would say if you have questions about what someone is doing, please call 311 and log your concern. And at the same time, if you're like me and you think that our crews are doing a really good job in trying to get water restored, reach out to 311 and let them know how much you appreciate the work, the work that's being done around the clock to get our water system back to normal. First off, I do commend the workers that are trying to get this problem actually fixed, unlike the ivory tower councillors and mayor that we have sitting in Calgary. Of course, I put out a tweet saying that every single councillor in the city should, I almost swore there, should step down. Um, they should resign. They all dropped the ball here, leading back to Nahed Nenshi's time in office, where a lot of these councillors, again, were still on city council. This was a complete act of ignorance to not follow protocol, to not keep up with uh, your inspection schedules. Part of the problem I have in Calgary when it comes to Jody Gondek and her raising of taxes as high as they've gone, almost 9% in the last year, is simply because they're more interested in doing art and infrastructure and looking good and having a good image than actually working on roadways, on, on uh, fixing 
our actual infrastructure, on expanding Calgary's resources for future homes, for future families coming to the city. They simply want to waste money. This, this city has a spending problem. Even good councillors that are on Twitter like Dan McLean saying, hey, I've got questions. I don't want questions. I want action. No, you shouldn't be driving down the street yelling at city workers. No, you shouldn't be giving them a hard time. You should be at City Hall asking Jody Gondek, why is it taking you multiple weeks to fix something that should take multiple days? Why are we shipping in pipes from San Diego when one was readily available not too far away and offered to the city? We've had an abundance of help offered to us. In fact, I saw rumblings that, again, I can't confirm because it was just put out on Twitter by a random person saying that the city had been told there were over 20 pipeline and, and uh, different construction businesses that had reached out to assist with the city of Calgary, which the city had abruptly ignored and didn't want to get back to. Again, I tried to verify that. I tried to look under that as much as I can. Can't find anything beyond that tweet. So it's, it's up to everybody else, I guess, to decide whether that's true or not. Um, but of course, they're not going to cancel the stampede. We're told to limit our use. We're told that don't flush your toilets, don't do your dishes, don't do your laundry, don't shower, work from home, uh, because you don't want to smell when you go out. And if you don't, we're going to shut off your taps. But when it comes to the Calgary Stampede, hey, we're working with them to ensure they can do everything so that everyone can go out and have a good old time, right? They're more concerned about us getting out and having fun. No. <laughs> the Calgary Stampede accumulates for a very large percentage of the city's income every year for the city's um, uh, profits. Here's an article back from when the lockdowns were starting to ease in Calgary back in uh, 2023, the first year since pandemic. More than 1.2 million people attended the 2022 Calgary Stampede, 60,000 shy of the all-time record, um, though the black ink is mostly credit to government funding. Again, this was last year's Calgary Stampede. It says, for the first time since the pandemic, Calgary Stampede uh, lassoed black ink in 2022, but would have been in the red without governments ponying up the cash. According to the latest financial statement, the greatest outdoor show on earth posted excess revenues of $13.8 million last year, well over $8.3 million loss in 2021. Again, Calgary Stampede still continued throughout the pandemic. It was a barren wasteland. Half the Stampede was there uh, versus what we see in regular years People who weren't interested in going, parties weren't happening. This, the Calgary Stampede, if you're not aware of the event, is a very large uh, celebration of rodeo, Western culture, and a midway. Um, you've got country bands coming in. You've got bands from all different music genres, uh, as well as entertainment venues coming into the city. This city comes to life for 10 straight days in the beginning of July. It's always the start of the first Friday after Canada Day. Um Politicians show up at the Stampede. Uh, everybody who's anybody shows up at the Calgary Stampede. Free Stampede breakfasts, barbecues all across the city. Bars are at their busiest. Restaurants are at their busiest. Hotels are booked out for reservations. The city sees a ton of revenue from the Calgary Stampede. So it says here that the exhibition said that $8.9 million of that $10 million was received last year, with the remainder coming in 2023. Calgary Stampede will continue to monitoring the impacts of the pandemic uh, on the community if it serves and will adjust to the situation as required, it said in a financial statement. The boost from the government was acknowledged by the Stampede CEO, who also pointed that 2022 attendance of 1.2 million people, just under 60,000 people shy of pre-pandemic figures, the second highest turnstile uh, count ever. So they say that it's going to take a lot of normal years to get us back to what 2019 was again before lockdowns. Uh, the Stampede, he said, is in line for another $6 million grant this year. Cowley said that nonprofits also receive those funds or NGOs again, adding the return of investment of the Stampede of 2019 was $540 million compared to $282 million of that coming from summer extravaganza. Tons of money, tons of revenue. The city just can't ignore it. And <laughs> rightfully so, at a time when they want to give themselves raises, when they want to pat themselves on the back, when they say, hey, we rushed it and got it fixed in time for Stampede, everybody. Look how great we are. We're the heroes of the day, even though our numbers are in the toilet. This is just another push uh, for censorship, I think, and for control. We're seeing Jody Gondek's team and, and 
all of City Hall, as well as our services now telling us, comply with us. And if you're not one of the people on board, we're going to make your life extremely difficult and shut off your taps. Now, again, I, I'm not saying that this has nothing to do with water volumes. This has nothing to do with the, the, the tragedy of this pipe bursting. But what I'm saying is the style of what we're seeing come out of this is very reminiscent to what happened less than a few years ago here in Canada. And I think that, again, if you want control, if a government wants control of its people, this is the best way to do it. Call me a conspiracy theorist if you want to, but I definitely think that this is the blueprint for cities moving forward to enact these policies as Calgary is currently discussing a permanent schedule to reducing water use. Again, Jody Gondek calling a environmental emergency her first day in office. This is alarming at best. I don't know what else to tell you folks. Let me know what you think down below. If I'm just being nuts or if this is future authoritarian style Trudeau policies coming to a city near you. If you guys enjoyed this video, I hope that you enjoyed it enough to click the subscribe button. If you haven't already, make sure to click your bell for notifications. Join me live here on the channel each and every Friday at 6 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Central for our live Friday night show, Friday Night Fringe, where we go over a plethora of things that have happened this week in politics, as well as some back and forth within the community. I always look forward to hearing what you guys have to say inside of those streams. It is definitely the highlight of my week, and I look forward to seeing each and every one of you there this upcoming Friday. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and have a great rest of your day. I'll catch you on the next one.